Hi, this is Jaya. Now we shall see what Chaucer tells about the yeoman, the prioress and the second nun in his The Prologue to the Canterbury Tales. Come, let's go to the tales. Chaucer writes, A yeoman had he and servant no more. Here, this he means the knight. The knight had a yeoman. Yeoman means a free servant. Like uh, he'll work till you, you, till you pay him and then he'll leave. If you're not paying him or if he gets a better salary somewhere else. And uh, he is the only servant that this knight brings along with him. And there's no more servants. At that time for him less right so. Because at that time, that is in that month of April, this yeoman was willing to ride with him. And he was clad in coat and hood of green. And this yeoman was dressed, clad means dressed, in coat and hood of green. Hood is, uh, is somewhat like a cap which covers your head and also your neck. And this coat and hood was in green color. A sheaf of peacock arrows bright and keen. Sheaf is a collective noun. Like we'll say a bundle of uh, um, stakes or a bunch of grapes like that we will say. A sheaf of peacock arrows. These peacock plumes when they are collected together we will call them sheaf. And here he had these peacock arrows which were bright and clean. Under his belt he bare them thriftily. And these uh, peacock uh, arrows he uh, had tied them with his belt in a very perfect manner. Well could he dress his taken Emily. So how all these yeomans will do they uh, keep their equipments properly. In the same manner, even he was uh, carrying these uh, equipments, equipments, all the weapons very perfectly, like how a your man should do. His arrows drooped not with feathers low, and his arrows all were really stiff. They were not drooping, the peacock feathers were not drooping down. And in his hand, he bore a mighty bow. So if he's going to have arrows, naturally he's going to have even a bow to shoot them. And in his hand, he was wearing a mighty bow. The bow was really very big. And not he had he with a brown visage. And uh, his head, and not he had he. That is his head was, that is his haircut was very clean. And his visage means face. And he had a brown face. Of woodcraft well could he all the usage. Like he knew how to uh, make uh, his uh, weapons. Uh, whatever he needs with wood in a very nice way he knew how the usage of these weapons and he could make his own uh, weapons beautifully upon his arm he bore a gay uh, bracer a uh, bracer is actually a wrist guard in the wrist all the soldiers will be wearing a guard and in his arm he was having a very gay means a very bright uh, very good looking uh, wrist guard bracer and by his side a sword and a buckler and his side he was uh, having a sword so he is also a very good soldier so he was having a uh, sword and also a buckler a buckler is a, a is a small uh, shield which all the people who are uh, fighting with the sword in one hand they'll have the sword in other hand they'll have a small shield to protect them uh, when the enemy is attacking and on that other side a gay dagger dagger is a very small knife which we will use to stab it will be sharp on both the sides so on the other side he also had a very uh, bright uh, dagger harnessed well and sharp as point of spear harness means decorated and this uh, dagger was beautifully decorated that is where you're holding you know in that place it is beautifully decorated and it was very sharp like one spear a Christopher on his breast of silver sheen and he was also having a Christopher medal on his breast and that uh, uh, medal was made out of silver and it was shining and horn he bare the border was of green and he was also having a horn with him and the border border here means uh, the shoulder strap it was also green in color a forester was he soothly as I guess and he's saying I uh, Chaucer is saying I can guess that he was a forester, meaning here he must be well trained in uh, all the fighting uh, manners uh, and he looked like a forester. There was also a nun, a prioress and among the 29 people, there was also one nun who was a prioress. Prioress is a clergy person, that is they belong to the church. 
effect of her smiling was full simple and coy and he saying that she was smiling and when she was smiling it was very simple and coy means uh, a sort of a shyness like she was feeling delicate and shy when she was smiling but was very simple her greatest oath was but by saint loy and actually when you enter into a church you will take an oath and he says that her greatest oath was with saint loy and she was clapped madam eglatin clapped here means called up called madam eglatin so her name was madam eglatin so if a question comes in any competitive examination asking you what is her name of the prioress you can say madam eglatin full well she sang the service divine and she saying when she was singing songs the devotional songs she sang them so well entuded in her nose full seemly and he says it was as though she was singing through her nose and french she spoke full fair and fetishly and she spoke french uh, in a very fair and elegant manner after the school school of stratford at bow and uh, from the way she was speaking uh, french we can understand that she was following the manners of stratford which was at the bow for french of paris was to her unknown and he saying the french which was spoken in paris was not known to her she spoke the french which was spoken in stratford and not the french which was spoken in paris uh, at meal well a thought was she with ale ale here means the drinks and the food which was served and while uh, having meals uh, everyone uh, were impressed with the way because she behaved in a very nice way when she was eating she let no morsel from her lips fall morsel is means tiny bit of food is called morsel and when she was eating not even a tiny bit of food fell from her lips now wet her fingers when her sauce dip like when she was dipping her food for her sauce her fingers did not dip into the sauce she did it very elegantly well could she carry a morsel and well keep like when she was eating she was able to take even a tiny bit of food to her mouth directly that no drop no fill fell upon her breast such a way that when she was eating not even a small drop fell on her breast in courtesy was set full much her list like she was very particular about her courtesies and she was very happy about the way she carried herself her over lip wiped she so clean and when she was eating she cleaned her upper lip uh, clean that in her cup there was no furthering scene of grease when she drank had drunken had her draught so when she was drinking her draught that is the soup which was given to her she drank them full that nothing was left like she ate her meals full she did not waste food full seemingly after her met she rot she reached for her meat in a very nice manner and surely she was great despot and her manners were surely very great and full pleasant and amiable of port and her Uh, the way she behaved was very pleasant and amiable and pained uh, and pained her to counterfeit cheer and she took pains to maintain her manners of court and been established of manner and she wanted in, uh, she behaved in such a way that she established herself as a mannered person and to be hold in dignity of reverence reverence means she behaved in such a way that everyone respected her but for to spoken of her conscience now he saying let me but let me speak about her conscience that is her moral sense she was so charitable and so piteous he think she was very charitable like she was considerate about others and she was also piteous she was taking pity on everyone that she would weep if that she saw a mouse caught in a trap if it were dead or bleed so he is saying she leave in weep if she sees a mouse caught in a trap whether it was dead or whether it was bleeding if it is caught in a trap itself she'll start bleeding i mean sorry she'll start uh, start uh, weeping of small hounds had she that she fed with roasted flesh or milk and pastel bread and she had small dogs with her hounds means dogs and uh, that she fed them with roasted flesh or milk and pastel uh, means white and white bread but she sure wept she if one of them were dead and chaucer says surely she will weep if one of them were dead because if she is going to cry if a mouse is going to get uh, caught in a trap now she has her own dogs and she is feeding them with so much of affection 
so chosa says surely she'll weep if one of them is going to die that is a dogs or if men smote it with yard and smart or even if men are going to beat them with a yard stick and all was conscience and tender heart and she was full of conscience and of a tender heart full simply her wimple punched up uh, like um, wimple is uh, the dress which was wearing punch here means the pleating full seemingly means it was beautifully pleated her dress was be- beautifully pleated her nose straight eyes her nose was well formed beautiful beautiful and beautiful nose she had a uh, eyes gray as glass and her eyes was uh, eyes were gray in color and they were shining like glass her mouth full small and they too soft and red and her mouth was small and not only that they were soft and red in color but surely she had a fair forehead and a fair and a forehead was also fair it was almost a span broad i throw and he saying uh, she had a broad forehead uh, which was about a span size span means uh, the distance between uh, the tip of your thumb and your little finger we'll say a span some say even 9 inches so here he saying her forehead was a span broad for hardly she was not undergrown so he is saying she is not a undergrown not a very young girl full fetish was a cloak cloak is the dress which they wear as i was aware and he is saying her cloak was very neat and clean very nice elegant of small coral about her arm she bare up and she had corals corals are these uh, red uh, beads uh, pearl coral we'll see you know that coral she was having in her um, arms a pair of beads guarded with uh, all with green and the corals also had green color beads along with them and there on hung a brooch of gold full sheen and she was there was also a brooch hanging in her dress which was made out of gold and it was shining on which there was first right a crown a and in the brooch first the letter a was there and this letter a was also crowned and after amor mensit omnia and after that it was written amor mensit omnia this amor mensit omnia means love conquers all uh, this was also a net uh, question so if they ask you what is the meaning of amor mensit omnia means love conquers all and then he continues he says another another nun with her had she so she had brought another nun with her that is the second nun that was her chaperlin chaperlin means secretary so the second nun was the secretary of the prioress and priest three and she also had along with her three priest so that is the introduction he gives about the prioress if you have anything more to add on to the explanation which i have given please write it in the comment box like the video share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe and uh, the first two parts also i have uh, written about this uh, i have made videos on this uh, the prologue to the canterbury tales the link to that i have given in the description box so if you want to see them you can click there and see them thank you for watching